go. Welcome back guys to the third YouTube that I've now finally made. And my video editing still has not gotten better before the interview part, I guess you could call this and whatnot. Um, but that is definitely gonna get better here in the coming days or weeks and whatnot, um, whenever I can just just do better. I'm learning as much as I can about it. Um, it's just not as easy as it may look, I guess you could say. Neither is talking to a camera, but I definitely could say that that's slowly improving. And also just the picking the spots of where to be at for lighting and stuff. Like last time, my forehead lit up like a runway, um, you know, an airplane, airplane runway with lights everywhere and stuff. So that was just terrible lighting, terrible editing video skills, all that good stuff. Um, so this time's definitely gonna be better. But anyways, getting into the real deal of this. So I wanna take this time for this video to make it about where I started, you know, I guess the day I was born until where I am now at 20 years old, about to turn 21 in um, two months, uh, two months and a few days. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so. I was born in New Mexico and I lived there for about four or five years and then I moved here to Raleigh, North Carolina and have been here since I was five and so I guess I went to Yates Mill Elementary School, you know nothing too big there, you know just you don't really remember much of that anyways and then went to Carnage Middle School was a little bit worse of an area, I guess you could say, for just sixth grade. And that's where I started getting picked on and bullied just because I guess kids there didn't have it as well as what you could say I did at the time. And so it was a lot easier for them to just push me around so, you know, maybe it would build them up and stuff, whatever it was. Um, that's when I started, you know, get picked on and all that good stuff. Seventh and eighth grade, I went to a much better school, Daniels Middle School, much better kids, you know. It, it was just a much more proficient and uh, it's just a lot better people at the school. And so did that for two years, um, actually made a few friends and actually was roommates with them um, this past year in college. Um, great guys. And so, you know, wasn't picked on as much there, you know, um, but just maybe, you know, a little bit, a little pushed around or whatever, but it, nothing really too much of a big deal there. And so there is actually uh, two guys that I just said I just roomed with in college and those are the two guys that got me into lifting in eighth grade. And so one day, they one day they took me to the gym in November of like 2007, probably going to get that wrong, um, and taught me how to bench press. Did not hit the bar, uh, not even, they were still spotting me on that. Um, but anyway, so I was just like, just so intrigued and amazed by I guess the the fact of lifting and just like how it works and stuff and so I pushed myself and I started setting small little goals and so I started in November with them and then come January I had spent so much time on bodybuilding.com and all these websites trying to learn how to I guess get better at benching and, and get bigger arms and things like that I had created a plan for my New Year's resolution and so that was to get bigger. And so within six months, I gained 30 pounds and I grew about six inches, I think within two months, but that's definitely a growth spurt and just happened to happen at the same time. Um, and while that time was going on and I was finishing off eighth grade, I was like, you know, just trying to look for how I could apply all of this strength that I was gaining towards something. And so I, you know, saw wrestling on the TV and I was like, oh, I'm so strong, I could do that. And so I wrestled for six months, and I did it for about one or two months into high school. And by that time, I was 115 pounds. I started at 85, like I've told you in my last videos, and wrestled in the 115 class, or whatever it was, 123 at the time. And uh, it just wasn't for me. I was looking for something with brute strength. I wanted something that I could literally just, I could just show how strong I was, whereas, Wrestling was more like agility and speed and quickness and it just, it's not what I was looking for at the time. And so eventually I was on Google one day and I wanted to look up, you know, how much should I bench, be benching for my weight? And, you know, I was looking around and I realized there was this thing called powerlifting. 
And so I looked more into that and realized I was just pounds away from state records. So I went to my first state, uh, I guess, meet and whatnot through Iron Boy Powerlifting, and I tied for the state record. And that was really more so of me just kind of learning how it goes, how to, you know, how to, you know, pause and how to set your feet up and make sure your head doesn't come off the bench and all those rules and stuff. It was just kind of a learning experience, and I loved it. The environment was amazing. And so I had to come back, and I had to break that record. And that I did. I broke that record, and then I broke four more between bench press, curling, push-pull, and deadlift. Um, I broke five state records, and that was all throughout high school up until the junior year uh, for me. And just, I guess high school in general, just in a broad sense for you, was, it was not a uh, rough time for me, it was just uh, different. I had friends, but none of them were just extremely close, and it wasn't this big group of friends or anything. It was just, I was kind of, I guess, uh, pushed away a little bit more so because of the fact that I was so into lifting and trying to, you know, be healthier or better myself, and uh, it just wasn't in, I guess you could say. And I'm actually going to do a video on that um, come soon once I get better at this stuff because I think that one's going to be a really important one. But anyways, getting back on track. Um, so, so I broke those five state records and I actually went to Worlds at one point, did not get that. I think it was a 215 pound pause bench press at the body weight of maybe 123. I was 15 years old, I think. And I was somewhere between sophomore and junior year, flew all the way out to Arizona. Thank you, Mama, for flying me out there. And uh, I, I missed it. And it was because I picked my head up and I didn't know about those rules at the time that you couldn't pick your head up to look down at the bar and things like that. So. You know, you win some, you lose some, and so I kept going, and my senior year of high school, I broke a state record, or a national record, on my birthday. So it was my 17th birthday, so I was 17, I weighed 140 pounds with sweatpants and a sweatshirt, no shoes, and you know, of course, regular clothes underneath that, and I benched at the meet 231 pounds paused, to break the record, but before I'd gone in, I'd benched 250 paused, and that's kind of like, you know, I just, just to simplify it for people who ask me, oh, what was your record, I'd just say 250, just because trying to explain to someone how powerlifting works and all that good stuff and pausing it and all that stuff is just too much, so I benched 231 at the meet, but the most I'd ever benched is 250. And so that was in September, it was September 8th on my birthday, and after that I realized you know what, I'm, I wanna look good, I'm tired of this. Like I just, you know, I look skinny strong, I guess you could say, whatever you wanna use for it. And so in December I was like, I'm, I'm done benching and I need to find something else. And I found men's physique and it was, it was perfect for me. It was not extremely popular yet at the time and it was, I think it was uh, 20, 2013 uh, when I had competed July of 2013 through the OCB Federation. It's all natural bodybuilding, get tested, lie detector, all that good stuff. And so I did that and it was an amazing experience just meeting people, seeing bodybuilders, you know, things like that. It was just amazing to be there. And I, I think it was a fantastic experience and I think it's honestly the funnest thing that you could ever do because you're getting clapped um, for doing something that you do in the mirror every single day. You know, I mean, you get to go on stage and pose and, and get clapped for, whereas normally you just do it in the mirror and don't get clapped for. So I thought it was an amazing experience. And so that was in July, right before college started for me. And when I got into college, I tweeted at Steve Cook and um, I asked him, he was one of the few and only guys that I looked up to at the time, and I asked him, I said, is everything that you do, is it ever not enough? Like, everything that you earn and achieve. And he retweeted, favorited, followed the whole nine yards, and I was just amazed. And then he, uh, of course, he responded to me and said it's not. And in summation, he pretty much just told me that it was, you know, things like family and God and things like that that mattered the most. And so I decided, you know, pursuing all this lifting just wasn't going to be the most important thing in my life. I wanted to have friends and stuff like that. And so I joined a fraternity. I wanted to fit in and I just wanted to, to be somebody, I, body, I guess you could say. And so I joined a fraternity and I got sick. And I got strep throat back to back somehow. 
And as soon as it ended one day, it happened again the next day. Got tested and everything, and it was just awful. I lost 18 pounds in three weeks. But I didn't just lose 18 pounds, you know, whether it was muscle fat, water, whatever it was. I lost self-confidence. I lost the ability to talk to girls, to make friends, to do anything. I literally could not. I felt awful about myself because I just went from being in a competition and looking the best I had ever looked in my life, as lean as possible and everything, to now somebody who just would go to a gym occasionally at 10 p.m. at night so less people were there and wear sweatpants and sweatshirts so that those people that were there couldn't see me. So I've been in that position where I've fallen off and also didn't want to be seen by people. So I can relate to a lot of other people besides just, you know, oh, I'm, I'm big and I'm here where I am now. I have a story too and that have come a long way. And um, definitely not as long as a lot of people I've met, but it's, it's my way of trying to at least uh, relate to clients and, and people and friends and things like that. So anyways, I went that whole year without lifting, any confidence, anything. It was just, it was awful for me. And I picked it up in the summer between my freshman and sophomore year. And within a couple weeks of getting back, I saw these two kids who are now my absolute best friends. They, they were on their uh, cell phone in front of me when I was doing uh, peg flies. And I don't even know if they know this, but he had up my Instagram and he was talking to his other friend and I could see my picture of my competition on his Instagram and I was just like, what in the world is he doing right now? And so, um, I, you know, I just assumed, of course, that he was talking about how I had changed from being, you know, you know, looking like X and now looking like what I had then. And it just, it pushed me even harder to, to, to drive and to just work as hard as I could to get back to where I was times 10. And it did. It came back within two months. And I looked better than I had before. And that was because, you know, muscle memory and all those good and fun things. But I'm actually, those two friends were Bogdan Padua and Water Fountain and uh, <laughs> Mr. Caleb. And so we actually became best friends. We met out at the pool at uh, Lifetime Fitness. And since then, we've been absolute best friends. And anyways, that summer was also the summer I worked three jobs. I worked in the indoor cafe, the outdoor cafe, both at Lifetime Fitness. And I worked as a lifeguard and I worked at Auto Bell Car Wash. And I did all of that at most 70 hours a week, a minimum of 40 hours a week between all of those jobs. I also helped for my first purchase of my, uh, help pay my first purchase of my Jeep, which my mom helped me out with. So thank you again, mom. And, uh, you know, I, I, I dropped a ton of money, no clue why, I mean, not even no clue why, just it, it was, uh, I dropped a lot of money putting things into it, you know, tires, rims, the whole lift kit, all of that good stuff, and I, it was, my, it's not really no reason, it's something that, it was my first big purchase, and it was something I could call my own, it's something that I could take care of, and, and so that was my thing, and uh, it's just, it, what made me happy, I guess, at the time, besides all the other things in life and whatnot, it was just another thing that I could look forward to, and that I could put time into, um, just like your body, when you're lifting, you put time into it, and you look at the results and you're just, you know, you feel accomplished. So it's the same thing with my Jeep and all that money and what I was working for because I had no reason to work 70 hours a week. My, my parents, I was very grateful for all the things that they gave me and they literally blessed me, you know, whether it was food or gas money or whatever it was at the times. Um, I didn't have to work that much. It was just, it was just a bug that got into me. I just, I just wanted to. And so that all carried over into my now, um, let's see, sophomore year of college. And I came back and I took 15 and 16 credit hours, I think, both semesters. I got a 3.6 GPA all of sophomore year. And I worked 25 to 40 hours a week at a car dealership detailing cars. And that, that was rough. It was extremely rough. I was eating anywhere between 5,000 and 6,000-ish calories every single day consistently. And um, it, it, was, it was only in that I was maintaining my weight. And that was only because activity level was so high. I mean, I was literally washing cars, you know, for five, six hours at a time. I was up at 4.30 or 6 a.m. every single day, home at 9 or 10 p.m. every single day, still had to do homework, and then constantly on my feet. So my activity level, activity level was outrageous. So that was just my sophomore year, and it was, it was the continue of, of my grind and just realizing how much you can accomplish in a day. And, and until you really realize, like, 
if I get up two hours earlier, I could accomplish this much more. And if you do that, you know, seven times in a week, I mean, you just really can do so much every single day. It's amazing. And it, it just got into me. And ever since then, I just, I can't, I can't go a day without at least accomplishing one thing. Even if I'm just on vacation or, or something like that, I just need to accomplish one little thing because every little thing is going to lead to something great. And so that, that's just my little motto right now. And so did that all sophomore year. And I actually uh, then started to realize, you know, I've got a, just like I talked about in my last video, I had a problem, maybe I could help people. Because I was helping people in the gym occasionally here and there, even throughout high school and things like that. And so I uh, started to go ahead and apply and get my NASM certification in the summer between my sophomore and junior year. I applied for my NASM certification, and which is definitely one of the best of the best. And got that and started outlining the uh, the programs that I wanted to do. You know, weight loss, uh, weight gain, whatever it was. I wanted to outline it so that when each person came to me, I could just go ahead and fill in the parts that were important for them um, to fit their schedule or to fit whatever it is that they wanted to do and stuff. Um, there was at least some sort of explanation of why you shouldn't train to failure or why what what cardio is and what the different types are and how to perform them. So there was an explanation of each and everything and stuff. And so we got those outlines and stuff and started, you know, promoting it a little bit on Instagram, you know, a little bit on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, the whole, you know, media, social media and everything. And in August, I guess, is when school starts or September, I went ahead and I made an Instagram post and I said, I'm training now, get at me. And so that was the beginning of Get Glick Training LLC, and so I guess I had I think 25 clients in the first month, which blew my absolute mind. Like that, that was unreal. And you, all 25 of you, and all the rest of you are amazing because that just that blew my mind that you trust me to be able to help you to reach your goals. So thank you so much. And anyways, I I did that, and then. Uh, another major thing that I had an idea for was why don't I get shirts and so I got shirts like this and I sold them all at cost you know 10 15 bucks whatever it was that they cost me sold them at cost and it was it was free marketing pretty much you know people got an awesome shirt that was soft you know fit them made them look bigger made them look good make them feel good and stuff and I was able to just get them out quickly I think it sold 150 within a, a few months or so and you know every single wear you know whether it's in Raleigh um, I even have some out of state in Louisiana Logan you my boy um, you know the rec center here at East Carolina University they're just everywhere and it, it's free marketing but it's also it's just it, it's amazing that that many people have supported me so thank you every single person that has and so junior year that was this past semester uh, I'm now a rising senior. Uh, nothing too exciting, really just the start of the business and, and trying to, to grow it as much as I can and, and do as much as I can for that. And so I haven't really quit my job. I, I did quit my jobs at Lifetime Fitness, but I didn't really quit my job at Autobell, so I do occasionally go there here and there. I just make some quick cash or make gas money or whatever it is, and stuff like that. Um, you know, see all my friends there and stuff. But other than that, um, junior year was pretty much just focused on this business and school for the most part and then right after junior year ended I entered summer school took two classes that was this summer that I'm talking in right now and took two classes so eight hour or four hours a day and on top of that I went to the library 40 hours a week I created a brand new program if not two I don't remember now anymore um, and Let's see, 40 hours a week at the library, four hours a day at the, in classes, and then the gym for a couple hours, training someone in person, of course all the online clients. So that first summer session was just absolutely busy and loved every minute of it. I love being busy. I love just having a little bit, of, just enough stress and just enough risk and that's just, it's the way I love to live. And so now I'm in the second part of the summer session. I do not have classes, thankfully, but I went home for about a week, saw family, saw friends, all that good stuff, came back, and now I'm here with no Wi-Fi, no AC. It's awful, but it's so that I can keep my grind going and stuff like that. Um, I'm able to come to the gym for 10, 10 8 to 10 hours uh, a day at a time, 
so I can work out and then I can use the Wi-Fi here to research more or learn how to use iMovie or Premiere or whatever it is, video editing and stuff, and then tape these videos and start popping them out. Um, so that, that's pretty much where I am right now. And I got my senior year coming up. I have one semester left, and then after that, I'll be joining an internship somewhere, hopefully out of state. And I actually spent today writing down uh, 25 different places I want to email, and I'll be doing that tomorrow, sending out 25 emails. Um, you know, resume, cover letter, all that good stuff. So just consistently, you know, doing things to better myself and further progress myself as quickly as I can to get to the best possible spot. And so I guess future plans are really just uh, try to get the best internship that I can and hopefully make the best connections I can. I think that's what I want to take out of whatever internship I get the most, whether, you know, besides the knowledge and things like that is connections um, so I can start my own real business. Uh, not that this isn't not real, um, but a much bigger one, whether it's blowing this one up or starting another one. Um, I want to, you know, have the connections and the help, I guess, whether it's investors or just people to know. I am, you know, more knowledge about how to pay taxes for a big business. You know, the small things you don't learn in school that are essentially probably a little bit bigger um, and more helpful if you're trying to go into that area. But that, that's really where I am right now, and that's pretty much my story. And if there's any more big important things, then I'll probably mention them in other videos. But other than that, that's about where I am in life. And, you know, I do have a lot planned out for the future, um, but I'm going to come and keep that to myself for right now. But other than that, I will probably start popping out some informational videos now. Hopefully, I just need to kind of plan out how I'm going to do them and stuff like that. But I'm excited for it, and again, thank you everybody so much for supporting me, especially my mom, dad, brothers, family, all of them and stuff. So thank you guys so much, and I will see you next week. Here we go.